Hello again and welcome back to the third tutorial on the um, <laughs> Concertina journal. Oh god, I'm so bad at forgetting words these days. Okay, so cross-fingered, you are now at the point of having put all the background pages on each of the envelope sides of your journal. Okay. Now, at this point, I would say to you, get a pencil and write in the middle of your envelope, front. Just check. Oh, you say that's the back. That's the front. Because you could end up doing what I've just done and thought that you were on the front and in actual fact you weren't, you were on the back. So um, I've just written the word front right in the middle there so that when I put this down to one side at least when I pick it back up I know I've got it the right way around okay now in the previous video I said to you about the cover in inverted commas that we're going to make and um, I suggested using you know the envelopes that you get that say please do not bend and they come with this grey board backing well that's what I've got here and that was what I'd intended to show you earlier but I couldn't find it and that's because it was over there by my computer so if you have a look at this you can see the thickness of it um, but another alternative um, as I said previously was to use your Amazon packaging or even cereal packets so I'm going to use this grey board now you can buy grey board from art shops and in fact they sell it at Hobbycraft now they used to sell two thicknesses of grey board so just watch out if you go about what thickness you're getting this is the thinner version okay because by the time we've added the card onto it that I'm going to show you now and then two sets of card then on top of that you've got actually quite a thick front cover okay so this is the board that I'm going to use so I'm going to measure this surface area the front part of my envelope and again it measures exactly the same as before so it's five and a half inches wide five and a half by seven seven and uh, three quarters couldn't think then seven three quarter inches okay now we want this board to be fractionally, and I mean like fractionally bigger than this surface area here. And we're going to cut out two, one for the front and one for the back. Now you don't want them too much bigger because they will end up conflicting with each other at this point and at this point when you've got each of the sides open. Right, you'll understand what I mean when I come to cut them out. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut them out one eighth of an inch bigger than the measurements that I did there. So, looking at my manky ruler, so we were at five and a half inches and I'm going to cut it at five and five eighths inches. Now what that means is it will give me a sixteenth of an inch on this side and on this side so that it'll overlap, it'll just give that little bit of a lip, okay? And the other measurement was seven and three quarters. So there's seven and three quarters, and I'm going to add one eighth onto that. So it's seven and seven eighths. Okay, so. Pull this up. So we want seven and seven eighths. That's how long it needs to be. Now then, let it be known, this is the thickness of card that starts to blunt your blade. And I would normally have got Big Bertha out, um, but uh, I've got no space. So that is now one eighth of an inch bigger than the actual front face of the envelope. So the next one wants to be five and five eighths. 
because I'm doing it one eighth bigger than the envelope. So that's one piece. Five and five eighths. There we go. So you need two pieces of those, as I say, one for the front and one for the back. So one for the front and one will sit on the back. So you can start to see that where they overlap here, this is where when you've opened them that they can start to have a conflict because they don't always just butt up, sometimes they overlap a little. But remember we've got nothing in this at the moment so there could be a bit of a gap due to the depth but again at some point they will actually meet up and we don't want them overlapping excessively so that's why we're only doing it that much bigger now I'm actually going to cover each of these in black card to match with the colour of my envelopes and this is where my Hobbycraft 210 GSM A4 card comes into play now I think in the end I used with all the decorating as well, I maybe used six or seven sheets, maybe even more, might have used eight. So it's always handy to have a pack of this stuff in. <coughs> even if you only buy one pack, it's always handy to have some in. So hopefully I've picked out two sheets there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to lay my card on top. And I'm gonna, gonna, that's a very brummy thing that, I'm, I'm from Birmingham and we're called brummies for our American friends. And uh, we have some bad habits of how we say our words. Gonna do that instead of going to the Queen's English. Now I'm gonna place glue all over this. Now sometimes gray board is brilliant at soaking up your glue. So you need to make sure that you've got plenty on. So you might find that you put glue on and then you go and have a look and it's all soaked in and it's bone dry. And I'm going to place it on this A4 card, but I'm going to leave a good three quarters of an inch ish let's see what have I done there Ooh. yeah about three quarters of an inch border on it and turn it over and flatten it on the other side to make sure that we've got good contact between the two pieces now I'm going to cut mine by hand, just to save me keep lifting up the paper trimmer. But I'm going to cut this three quarters of an inch ish on this side, and it doesn't have to be dead straight because it's going to be curled round to the back, and you're not going to see it. But obviously, it does work better if you've got a straight edge to work to. Okay, so that's what we end up with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these corners on each of the four corners, all right? Now it takes a little bit of practice, but I do have a bit of a cheap way of doing it. So I'm going to cut this corner off, but I'm going to leave a slight, a slight gap between that corner and where I'm going to cut it. And you'll see why I'm going to do that in a moment. Ooh, steady your hands, Carol, steady your hands. There we go. And I'm going to do the same on this one. And that one. I might have done that one too big. I'll leave it too big so you can see. And then this one. Okay, don't throw these corners away just yet. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it like this and I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to put a tiny bit of pressure on here so that it's pushing down to help to create the fold where it's going to fold around the grey board. Okay, so you can see that now has folded round. But doing it that way just helps to create that bit of a crease. And also, if you apply that little bit of pressure here, and you can even use your bone folder, it just helps to make the crease more permanent. Okay, now we're just going to pull that back for a minute because otherwise it's going to get in the way. I'm going to do the same on this one. And just push that back. And on this one. And on the fourth one. Now then, if I lift over that side and that side, hopefully I'll get a lovely mitered corner, which means that you've got a lovely diagonal. I'll show you up close. You've got a lovely diagonal meet from this corner here. Okay. Let's see. No, I've got one there as well. Got one there too, and I've got. Oh, I'm a smarty pants. <laughs> I've done all four okay. Okay, I'm going to cut one on purpose just a little bit too tight to the corner so that you can see. Okay, so if I do that, can you see now I've got a gap. And you're like, ugh, lots of swear words, lots of cussing there's a cheap way to cover that up and that is using one of these corners here so what I would do is just run that over the corner so that it's now black or use a felt tip pen to do the same and then I'm going to stick this corner down in there so that when I fold those two edges over it covers over that gap that I once had and it kind of hides the fact that you've cut it incorrectly all right so don't panic if you make a boo-boo but don't throw those out until you've double checked now I'm going to use my tacky glue on this because I always feel that collal glue is great for paper to paper. But when you want something that is that little bit more sturdy, needs to be more sturdy. So like this is it's a card that's going to stick to a card. I want something that's going to be that little bit stronger. Now whilst I'm pressing down, it is going to spring up again probably in a second when I let it go when I move on to the next side and you can always once you've put your glue on and pressed it down you can sit it underneath a book and just leave it weighted for a little while until the glue has actually gone off the other thing that I like to do as well sometimes is just leave the glue say look I'm springing up is just leave the glue to just go off a little before I actually turn it over so it's almost like it forms a little bit of a skin on top of the the glue which somehow makes it that little bit more tacky it's not as wet so let me hold that one for a minute let me leave that for a second it kind of just leaving it open like this just sort of just takes the wetness of it off. Does that make sense? <gasps> Maybe I sound like a mad woman saying stuff like that. 
but I do find that it works really well if I just leave it for a little bit before I actually glue it straight down and then do the last one Now you want to make sure that you have cut it sort of three quarters of an inch to an inch bigger because we're going to sit the envelopes on top of this and the last thing we want is a little bit of grey board showing because we haven't cut these quite deep enough. Now then, please stay stuck. Hmm. Oh, that bit's lifting up. Of course, the other thing that you can do as well is you can put clips on it, binder clips, to just hold it in place, or even paper clips. Wrap a piece of elastic round if you want. But you just need to be careful that sometimes those things can mark the front of the card. Now then, make sure front. I'm going to stick this onto there. Now it's all very black so it's it's actually quite difficult to see to make sure that you've got it in the right place. Now you don't put glue on this bit, you put glue on this bit because this is the smaller bit. This is smaller than that, hopefully. So I'm going to use my tacky glue again because again I want that strong contact between the envelope and the grey board and like I say the grey board is very good at supping up the liquid part of the glue maybe should have got me a bigger bottle than this one let me just get my bigger bottle otherwise I'll be there all day with that little thin nib my poor bottles they're all collapsing apart now they um they used to have really thin, well, thinnish nib ends. Yeah, they've introduced them with all these new fat nib ends now, and I don't like them. So I've been holding on to my thin nibbed tacky glue bottles for ages, but to the point where they're now sort of collapsing a bit. Again, though, we want to make sure that we haven't got too much around this outer edge because otherwise it will ooze out so if it looks as though you've had you have just rub it with your finger and bring it in towards the center don't do it out bring it in okay and just rub it on my hand like that And that will get rid of the excess okay now this is the this is the fiddly bit so don't say you haven't been warned I'm just gonna sit that on there oh look my glue's oozed over we've only got a tiny bit of a border all the way around but if I lift it up I can maneuver it So this is going to have to be a visual thing for you when you come to do it because you probably won't be able to see what I'm doing to, to make sure that I'm all lined up with it being black on black. Okay, and I can see I've got some glue oozing out the top there. So I'll rub that off. And again this is the sort of thing that you want to do put a book on it and leave it to just go off once you're happy with how it sits okay so that's now my front cover on the front of the journal now i would repeat that with this piece cover it in exactly the same way with the black card 
turn this over and stick it onto the back. The next thing that I'm going to do, I've lost it. Where have I put my paper? There it is. I'm just going to put this on the front to act as the background but I only again want it fractionally smaller than the front cover now if we remember I cut this an eighth of an inch bigger than the actual envelope size so if I cut this to the envelope size then it means it's an eighth of an inch smaller and I will have just a very thin border all the way around it so the envelope measured five and a half by I've forgotten <laughs> I'll have a look again in a minute <clears throat> I mean how many times have you measured it Carol and you still can't remember I should have it on a big card in front of me shouldn't I as to what measurement I need it to be and we'll cut this edge off okay measure again Mind you, what, what's that saying? Measure once. No, measure twice. Do it once or something, I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure some of you will remember. Right, Carol. Seven and three quarters. So I want this to be seven and three quarter inches deep. I want it to be the exact same size as the envelope. Seven and three quarters, Carol. Seven and three quarters and we want it five and a half inches wide again exactly the same size as the envelope and I'm going to ink that up with my black soot And I'll just say that if you're um, just catching this video as your first one, I would suggest you go and watch the first envelope tutorial that I did because there are techniques and things in this that I referred to in the first one and um, I will talk as though you've already watched that first one. So it might be handy for you to watch. Okay. Now then, if this, if this was directional paper, I would need to make sure that this is the right way up. As it happens, it's not directional, so it doesn't matter. And I'm going to glue that down on there. So you can see, look, I've got a thin border all the way around. So I'm gonna stick that on with me collal because it's paper onto paper. Come on. Now you come to play. No. This means it's got dried up probably. Right, try again. There we go. We're going. We're going girls. We're going. Ooh, slipped off the edge there. I should be glad when it's uh, lighter nights. I mean, I like spring, I don't like summer, but the reason why I like the lighter nights is I've got to start stop filming shortly. I can't do any more recording because it gets too dark. And I don't have the kind of studio where I've got really great lighting. Okay. So I'm gonna sit that on there make sure that I've got an even border all the way around that's that bit done okay so you need to do that before you can go on to the next video so you need to do this for the front and you need to do it for the back easy peasy lemon squeezy right I'm in need of a cup of tea so I'm off to go and make myself a brew I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.